and salutations everyone. How's everyone doing? This is Anna aka Boondog of Bliss and I gotta show you my shirt. I love it. Since I've been cleaning my closet I found so many cool things I bought before and I never worn. I've seen the future and it's <laughs> expensive <laughs> I that's why I love wild fox wild fox rocks man they have the cutest little sayings on things and their jumpers you know I live in their jumpers anyway so today we're gonna talk about a topic that gets asked about in almost every chat I ever been to maybe except one okay like give me one but Majority of the chats I've been in, this question gets asked over and over and over again. And I was actually telling, talking to Lindy Glenn and I'm like, you got to do a video about this. And I'm going to do a video about this. We need to have lots of videos out there because this question is the most repeated question I can think of that comes up all the time. And it's very important that you get a handle on this because... What's the one thing that can, that can cause you to avoid lots of pesky questions? Measuring. How can you reduce returns? Measuring. How can you separate your listings from others, which in corporate talk is, you know, differentiation and uh, competitive advantage? Measuring. And what can you do to have like an appearance of a professional shop that really portrays professionalism and confidence? It kind of says, I'm not a floozy, fake, sham, phony seller. I'm real. Measuring. So that was four. I tried to get five. I couldn't think of a fifth one. And I hate having like not rounded lists of things. So I'm not making this any type of list. It was just four reasons that measuring is super important. So real quick video today showing you how and what to measure to improve your listings. Um, this, you know, this goes across platforms, but as I'm thinking about it, as I'm saying these things, I'm thinking for, um, off of Poshmark primarily, uh, just because I think eBay does a great job kind of facilitating you in that direction and there is a already a heavy culture of providing measurements. Uh, Poshmark, however, um, does not have that. And so you can still really stand out by having really complete Poshmark listings. Now, in order to help you along with this endeavor, I'm going to share with you a website that um, I recently found. And also one of my viewers uh, sent me a Facebook message like two days ago saying, I've got a really cool tool. And I'm like, I've already like started to make a video on it and I really hate it. So I'm recording it again. So, um, so here we go, I'm going to share with you that tool and I'm going to sh show you how to measure everything and with a focus on being most efficient. So um, while there are lots of measurements you can provide, I intend to show you the bare minimum you can get away with and the most common um, measurements that people are seeking um, uh, when they're looking for clothing. Okay, let's get to it. All right. Let's get this party started. So, measurements. And I'm going to focus today specifically on women's clothing measurements. And besides showing you, um, I wanted to make sure we got the definitions down and you have a visual in your mind as to what we're going to be doing. Um, so the primary measurements we're going to focus on is the bust. And you want to measure that in the most widest um, place. Um, so if you're measuring yourself, imagine your bosom. You don't want to measure above or below. You want to measure at the widest, right? So bust measurements, natural waistline, not the one you want to have, but the one you really do have. Don't suck in. And they always tell you if you're going to measure yourself, do so after dinner. 
Don't measure yourself in the morning after you skip dinner the night before. That's going to be unrealistic. And funny, funny thing, when it comes to women measuring themselves, women are in denial about their measurements. So that's why very often they're so picky and dissatisfied with some of their purchases because they think they fit one way, but they really don't. So just be mindful of that as well as a seller of women's clothing. Then we're going to talk about the hips, which is the widest part um, of, your, of your hips. We're going to talk about the rise, which is from the crotch up to the end. And we're going to talk about the inseam. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you for each of these clothing items, the must to have measurements and also kind of a nice to have if you're going to add something additional. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to show you a range. I guess I'm going to show you the bare minimum, which will make you an efficient reseller. But I'm also going to show you like the max. Should you be providing measurements of everything possible? people could possibly think of, I'll show you what those are as well. So it's up to you, right? So let me close this down. Also, what I wanted to tell you is it would behoove you to save a chart that looks like this and have it handy. Print it out, put it on your wall, laminate it, put it in the little plastic thingy majig, tattoo it on yourself, whatever. Find one. Um, kind of universal standard, something that you can stand by. And the reason why I say that, oftentimes I see, and I see myself and I see other resellers, we don't have a size tag on some, size tag on some of the clothing we pick up. So we have to kind of size it ourselves. And although we're gonna provide measurements so that we're not misleading people in any way, it's nice to fill out the size field when we are finishing up our Poshmark, um, Poshmark listing or eBay. You want to have something in there. And before you do your best guesstimate, take the measurements and back into a size. That would be good. So having something like that handy to give you an idea um, is very useful. So that's that. Um, also, before we start, I'm going to show you three of my favorite resources for measuring and where I've um, very frequently referred to myself. The first one is, let me move my face, womensizechart.com and it has the standard U.S. women's sizes, the plus sizes breakdown, and then specifically with women's 14, 16, 18. So this is what helps me um, size the plus size clothing that we get. Um, then we have some additional measurements, breast size chart, women's size chart for tops, blah, 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 blah. So there's a lot of nifty um, measurements here that um, help me out. And there's also additional clothing items down below. The other one, which I think you're going to like adore, this might be your favorite one, is this, it's called Size Charter. So there's several functionalities in here, but I wanted to show you this. So let's say you are going to, uh, you wanna find out your average size across all brands, just like it says here. You're going to enter your information. I haven't measured myself, so I don't know. I'm just gonna, Put in like make beliefs number, make belief numbers. Uh, 28, waist 25, hips 34, um, inseam 32, and then revise my size. So this tells me that um, my tops would be a medium, my bottoms an eight extra small. That's kind of weird, but based on your measurements or the size you wear in your best fitting brand, you may find a good fit in these brands. And so it shows you, um, and I really like that. I screwed up on my, on my tops measurement. Um, hold on, so it's uh, 30, 26. Okay, that's better because that's what I am. Um, and so it shows you this information, which is really, really cool. But besides that, I wanna show you the clothing size chart. 
which by brand, by brand, has the information. So let's say we're gonna look at free people. Free people size chart is here with the measurements. Isn't that freaking awesome? This is the standard that you would find on their website for their sizing. Let's go and look at Lululemon, best-selling item on Poshmark. Shirts, t-shirts, and sweatshirts. Bust, waist, hips. Hello, people. It doesn't get better than this. You gotta give me a round of applause for this one. If you don't know this website, I just gave it to you. You're welcome. Give me a thumbs up, please, 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 please. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, then find your shape, blah, blah, blah. There, that is, that is really cool too. Um, once, if you really want to become a stylist, uh, clothing stylist, uh, this kind of information is your must to know. And if you're going to become a seller that really wants to not only sell something, but convey the fit of a clothing item, this is something you should learn about because certain styles are more uh, fitted for certain body types. So for example, you can say if, if someone has a, um, a rectangle uh, pattern, a rectangle body type, um, peplums and flared um, skirts give an illusion of an hourglass. So you can totally say that for, um, include that type of language in your listing, which makes you that much more valuable um, as a seller. So all that information is in here as well. But like I said, the clothing size charts to me are just freaking priceless. And granted, not all the not all the brands are here, but if you look closely, these are the most commonly sold um, um, clothing brands, and there are our bread and butter brands. So this is also a great list of bread and butter um, brands, sizecharter.com. And then the last one I'm going to be using um, for the purposes of learning how to measure is Sizely, S-I-Z-E, period L-Y, Sizely. This is um, a tool for people who sell clothing on eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Shopify, blah, 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 um, to help them with um, offering measurements as, you know, as a seller, I'm offering these measurements in a pretty format. So this gives you a template and I'm going to show you how it works, which you can watch the video on how it works. Um, hold on. Let me move my face some more. All right. So for example, let's look at a t-shirt for women. It shows you what the measurements, first of all, how to measure, what to measure. And second of all, it gives you a template. So let's say we want to do a uh, Ann Taylor top, oops, beep, model, ABBA, I don't know, side extra small. And then you have measurements for, let's say you have measurements for chest, you have a measurement for waist, and you have a measurement for length, and that's all you have. Let's say that's all you have. You can have more. You would then click generate image. And what it does is it generates an image for you to use on your website, on your eBay listing, on your Poshmark listing, on your Shopify listing. Um, I don't like the fact that the writing, which this is Ann Taylor, ABBA, extra small, is that light gray. Um, so I don't know if that's something that can be changed. Maybe we can reach out to the individual, but I can barely see that. Not, I guess maybe not that it matters, but it's not, oh, I did it in centimeters. I'm sorry, you guys, that's why it looks funky. Um, if I did it in inches, it would look better. But then in addition to listing your picture of the clothing item, if you provided that, which displays the measurements, how much more professional does your listing look? 
amazing, amazing. Now granted, okay, some of you are screaming or you're like, I'm not gonna do that for all the little fast flip clothing items I have, and that's very true. You're probably not gonna use this for 80% of your stuff. You're gonna come here, learn, absorb, and use the templates here and there sparingly, but you want to use them for expensive things um, and things that have a lot of things happening to them, thus they need lots of different measurements. You might wanna use that for a good visual um, to present to the potential buyer. So this is the templates. You can also embed, uh, first of all, copy a link and you can get the HTML code in case you are um, using a website and you're you know, sh selling your clothes through your own website or just on an Apple, command shift four, grab the image, boop, boop, you have it. You can insert it into your Poshmark listing, eBay, Mercari, whatever. So that's the wonder of this awesome website. The second wonder is the guides, are the guides. Grammar police yelling at me already. Most recent guides, they have generated um, little guides for certain items. Not, it's not all encompassing, but how to measure each item. So if my video is not going to be enough, go in here and check it out. It spells it out, just item by item. It shows it to you, what you should measure and what's important to measure. And like I said, the templates are available to you. Sizely is fantastic. Okay, without further ado, let's move on to our little classroom style um, presentation. This is the second time I'm recording this video. The first time I recorded, there was no sound. So thus, everything's already been pre-filled and I had to put yellow stickies on there. First, let's, let's look at a blazer. And like I said, we're gonna look at must-to-have measurements and nice-to-have measurements. The most measurements you can have on a blazer, there's a lot. There's a lot of measurements. So if you wanna be very thorough, this is where you, where you go and do this at. Now, would you ever take all these measurements? I would say, yeah. If you had a Chanel suit, you'd probably wanna measure every single little piece of it um, because the profit is gonna be worth it. It's gonna ROI to have every single measurement. So even the most fussiest pickiest buyer would be satisfied with what you offer. And second of all, it would look really professional if you offer that. But anyway, um, if you are just selling Poshmark, eBay, it's not that, not that expensive. On a blazer, the must to have are bust. GG, now. I know you want to help, but now. Bust, length, and shoulders. Shoulders, and how do you measure shoulders? Let's, let's look at this, this is very important. And that is the number one measurement, measurement on blazers that is often missed. And that is the one I ask for very frequently because it's not made available. People only measure bust and length. And, oh my God. Gigi Maria, I swear. Okay, are we still recording? We're still okay. We're good, good, good to go. The shoulders are measured from the hem on the shoulder across to the other hemline where the shoulder meets the sleeve. In this case, 14 inches. You got to remember that because women like for blazers to be fitted so they don't look like, you know, they're oversized and let's, let's keep it simple. Women like fitted items. Unless the style is oversized, women want things that are fitted. All right. Now, 
I want to remind you again of how easy this could be. If you're, if you haven't been measuring before and I, you're now like starting to measure and you're thinking, oh my God, that's going to be so much work. I don't do this. I'm going to remind you of the speech function that you have on your phones. Um, now granted, I don't know what it looks like on a non Apple phone. But if you have an Apple phone, it's so stinking easy. So I am going to me take measurements on this blazer right now, the three measurements, and I want you to see how easy this can be. I'm going to press the speech function. Shoulders, 14 inches, new line. Length. 25 inches, new line. Bust, 17 inches, new line. Done. Boop. 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 Less than one minute. I think you can incorporate that into your process. Okay? I need you to. It's important. All right. So we looked at a blazer. Now, what is a nice to have measurement that you don't have to, but is a nice to have? Waist and sleeve. On more expensive um, blazers, um, especially with suits, you want to include the waist and the sleeve length. And the sleeve length is measured from on the outside, not on the inside. I saw some woman take like an inseam, inseam length of a, um, of a sleeve. No, it's measured on the outside. And when measuring the waist, make sure the clothing, uh, the clothing you're measuring is buttoned up, zippered, whatever, and laying flat, measure it at the waist. Moving on, t-shirts, shirts, whatever, any shirts, I'm going to use the same same measurements for all of that. The nice, the need to have are bust and length at minimum. If you're going to be measuring a top for a woman, bust and length. We want to make sure it the girls are settled in in a comfortable fashion. And if it's a button up, that we don't got the thing poking out and stuff because that's embarrassing. Now, if the shirt is longer and it has a um, fitted shape and it comes in at the waist, the nice to have measurement is the waist. And especially with a blouse, um, like a nice blouse that buttons up um, with over, with um, pullovers, it's a little different. But if you have a button up shirt, you got to do the waist um, because you don't want to be poking out of the buttons at the very bottom. Ladies don't like to admit they have a little pouch and sometimes that uh, gets in the way, right? Um, skirts. Let's talk about skirts. My favorite thing to sell and create listings for because it's so easy. On a skirt, we are going to measure the waist and the length. And I'll tell you when to measure the hips. But skirt, waist and length. Um, let's take a look at a Zara skirt here. New of tags, $59.90. I bought it a while ago, never wore it. Now I don't fit into it, it's too big. So what we're going to measure is the waist and the length. The length. Um, if it is a tulip type style or it's longer on one side than the other, you want to make sure to um, uh, emphasize the shortest part and for example measure the shortest part and then measure the difference of the longer one so you can say on the left size 15 inches and then longest part of the skirt is 18 inches or whatever women want to know where stuff falls and that it's not too short and that it's you know appropriate for their body but with um, skirts measuring the hips is important when you have a structured piece, a pencil skirt, when something is um, uh, double lined, for example, and it doesn't have a lot of stretch. Women want to know if they're gonna be able to fit into a skirt. And the skirt is the, such a 
personal clothing item that needs to fit well because there's so much happening in a skirt. Your butt, your hips, your tummy, your legs, a lot of stuff is happening. So the measurements on a, on a skirt are important. Women wanna make sure it fits them well and without trying it on, you gotta help them out, right? So that is why uh, well, waist, length, and hips are the nice to have measurements. And like I said, on anything that is like, a, actually anything that goes down to the knees, um, you wanna make sure you offer the hips, uh, especially on pencil skirts and fitted skirts with that are um, skirt suits and things like that. Pants, let's talk about pants. Pants and jeans I'm going to group together, although within uh, Sizely, you do have the differentiation, but um, for the purpose of this, we're gonna keep it all together. Pants, for pants, the basic measurements are waist, inseam, and what? Rise, the rise, that's right. I'm going to take my Rock Revival jeans as an example. I just finished uh, uh, laundry, so they were available. And let me get my, my tape measure, and let's talk pants. And then I'll give you a little hint on hemp, hint on dress pants. So with jeans, the rise is, the rise is from the cross and the crotch, to the top, eight inches, waist, and with pants, the length as an industry standard is signified by the inseam, the inseam. And third, generally under 30 is short, 32 is a regular, and 33 and greater is generally classified as long, but it will differentiate by uh, clothing company and their definitions. I just gave you the most broad one. So that is how you measure pants. And those are the basic three. Now, a nice to have is the hips. And that is especially true once again with dress pants, kind of structured pants, Pants that don't have a lot of give, so if there's no spandex in them, people wanna make sure they fit in there, especially if they have wider hips. Um, so don't be, don't be surprised if you get asked for that measurement, but if, you're to, if it's just better maybe to provide them on dress pants, um, I highly recommend that, okay? Now with pants, another measurement, which I'm not putting on there because it's a little bit rare, but it comes in when we talk about shorts, is the thigh. At times, women will ask about the thigh measurement. And there's just a lot of us ladies out there that have bigger thighs, and they wanna make sure our little chunky monkeys fit in um, the pants that we're buying. So FYI, the thigh, and the way the thigh is measured is just across at the top, boop, boop. That's the measurement. All right, moving on. Dresses. Dresses are awesome, dresses are fun. I love wearing dresses. Let's talk about measurements. Boop, boop. We want the length, we want the bust, and the waist. Those are the three most common, bare minimum measurements you should be providing. Let me see if we have a dress in here. What, what, what? Short dresses, long dresses, the same, it's the same type of um, setup here. Oh, do I have a dress? I do have a dress to show you. A recent thrift find, Vanessa Virginia from Anthropology. Bust. Ah. Can you guys see me? Can you guys show me? Bust, waist, and length. That's, that's the length. Now, 
If this was a bodycon dress, a sheath dress, any other type of dress, hips might be something that you might have to measure as well. This is a fit and flare A-line, therefore there is no worry that the hips might not fit. But hips might be a measurement that you take. And in dresses, I left it blank because it just really depends on the dress. Um, there might be dresses where the torso is something that you have to measure. Um, with this dress, for an example, the torso would be something I would measure to see where the waistline um, ends. There are a lot of people with irregularly sized torsos. Um, I, for example, have a very short torso. It's, it's such a problem, as a matter of fact, that I have problems with bras as well. Um, because the bras that I do buy are ones that like even push me down and I need the girls propped up. So I have to have, I can only wear bras that have adjustable straps. Same thing with dresses. I can only wear dresses that have adjustable straps. So this dress doesn't work for me. It does not work. The waist will not fall where it needs to fall on my body type. So be aware of that. And don't think women are crazy or picky or annoying if they're asking for that um, measurement. It's just us, unfortunately, have those problems. And so a lady might say, could you give me the waist hem? Or can you give me the torso length? So just remember, torso would be from here to the waist. And the waist hem is from the waist down to the hem. So those are the two measurements that you might be asked to include. But I'm leaving that blank because it just depends on the dress, okay? Moving on, a sweater, 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 sweater. The minimum measurements on a sweater are, oh, do we have a sweater in here that we can look at? Let's see. <clears throat> sweater, length, and bust. That's the bare minimum. Nice to have. What's that? You should know by now. What's that? H and S. Hem. H is for hem. Um, some people will want to know the bottom of the sweater, the hemline, and the sleeve. And I wanted to bring up some something about unusual styles and measuring unusual styles. When you have a unusual style sweater such as this, although this is a little simpler than the stuff I've gotten before, you want to provide more measurements than not. In this situation, I would provide the bottom hem measurement. And then at the same time, I would provide the sleeve measurement so that they know where it falls on the arm. Is this a three-fourths sleeve? Is this a elbow sleeve? Does it go all the way to the end? Um, People are going to want to know with an unusual style how it falls on our body. So be ready to provide more measurements on pieces like that. Funky doodles like that. Also, I forgot to tell you, talking about the short torsos, pieces like that where the straps are not adjustable, you really want to measure that. For example, this looks beautiful. I would wear it all day long. Tracy Reese from Anthropology for Anthropology. I can't wear this. The way it would fall, it would like fall below my boobs. So the measurements of the straps are important. Okay, sweaters. So sweaters, length, bust, and a nice to have would be the hem and the sleeve. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, shorts. Short, short, shorts. The um, minimum measurements. Oh, and I think I have a visual for it. Let's do a visual. Shorts. Here we are. The bare minimum. Oh, I lost my face again. R. Waist. Length. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my God. I misspoke. Disregard. Waist, inseam, and the rise. 
just like in the pants we talked about before. But I have an additional nice to have on shorts that I want you to consider to include. And that is, oh yeah, I'm like, what? The thigh. I want you to consider the thigh. Um, just because women are sensitive if the pant is too narrow and it kind of squeezes out there like I don't know if I can show it to you but so let's say you have a short and it's it's so tight that it digs in and then your thigh like pokes out on the outside that's not pretty so women are sensitive about their thighs and if it's a short that kind of you think it's a little tight down there, has a smaller opening, um, consider, consider measuring that. Um, just because, you know, most, most shorts like end at the, at the most unpleasant area right there. So just food for thought. Um, so that's why I have thigh here. You can do slash opening however you want to do it. So those are the bare bones. The bare bones measurements that you should include in your listing. You can see a trend with pants, um, shorts, it's waist, inseam, and the rise with tops, bust, length, waist. There, you know, there, there is a method to the madness there. It, it all kind of comes together. So I'm going to um, now show you some other stuff. Hopefully you're enjoying this. I have another tool that is great for men's clothing. Now, I don't sell out of men's clothing. I can only tell you about this tool from a perspective of a buyer, as a consumer of men's products. So there's this website called Indochino. And if you, for example, let's talk about it in the perspective of your husband. And you wanna make sure that when you shop for your husband, you have the right measurements for him. On this website, they have a walkthrough sizing guide. You would enter your husband's height. So I'm gonna enter mine. Uh, 168, I don't know. And then you press continue. And what it does, it walks you through all the measure measurements around your for neck, a man. Over your Adam's apple, following its natural curve. Oh, so let's put 15. Oops. So that's the first measurement. Got that. Then. Identify the bones at the top edge of each shoulder. Measure from bone to bone over the natural curve of your back. Awesome. Let's do 20. Biceps. So Relax although I'm not going to go through all of them, because as you can see, there are 18 different measurements on a man. There's probably 19, but we're not going to talk about that. No, we're not. Okay, there's 18 measurements and it helps you, guide you through. And at the end, it provides you with a comprehensive overview of the size, like a little chart. So when I do that and I get that, I snap a picture of that and I keep it. So anytime I'm shopping for my man, I have everything I need to know, every measurement, size measurement I can possibly uh, think of for him in a nice little format. And then obviously if you're going to be ordering clothing, this is a great, uh, great place to go and order uh, from. I've never done it. I just really love their walk through measuring tool. I don't know why you guys might think, oh my God, you're so silly. You can just take all the measurements and write it down on a piece of paper and there you go. I know, I kind of like the video in case someone doesn't know exactly how to measure a bicep. Not that anyone would not know that, but I'm just saying. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Another little thing I forgot to talk about when I was showing you guys my um, screen share 
was the kind of definitions of relaxed fit, slightly fitted, and fitted. I think when describing clothing, those are such kind of loosely used and um, especially when, you know, true to size or oversized or loose, um, there's so many ways people use that. Sometimes it's hard to kind of decipher how it's going to fit you, right? So I just want to give you a standard definition of relaxed fit, slightly fitted and fitted. So relaxed fit, that's when uh, the item has subtle shape, but it just lays on you just with most ease, just lays on you with a shape. That's relaxed fit. It doesn't hug anything, but it has a shape. A slight fit is that it's like e um, easy over your body, but it flows over the contours of your body, it gives shape of your body without being tight. So that's slightly fitted. It follows your body. And then fitted is when it close to the body and it directly follows the contours of your body every perfection or imperfection and it gives least amount of ease right so it's huggy it's huggy it's a, a body con dress is an example of a very fitted outfit um, a suit with a suit blazer that gives that is fitted um, by definition should be called slightly fitted because it doesn't hug you. If, if it does hug, hug you, if it's completely fitted, then it's too small. You want a suit blazer to be slightly fitted. That's to accentuate everything and do not over accentuate things you don't want to. So that, you know, just a close fit that contours your body. So just remember those, those definitions and true to size TTS, that's when the person outlines that it's a right on. If it's something that's listed small, it's a small by the definition of small. Um, and then if they say oversized, that means larger sizes can wear it. It's an oversized fit, meaning other people can fit into it, but it's meant to have that oversized fit. Now, if it, someone says relaxed fit, that is not the same as oversized. Uh, relaxed fit, it's just that it has a shape, but it doesn't hug your corners. It doesn't hug anything. It's just a relaxed fit. A loose fit is a step above relaxed fit, and then oversized is the step above. So I'm, I'm going to go over that spectrum again. So let's go over the spectrum from smallest to largest. We have fitted, hugs all the contours, slightly fitted, has the shape of your body but is not tight, relaxed fit, it has a shape but it doesn't hug anything. Um, uh, after relaxed fit, we have loose fit, sometimes synonymous with relaxed fit, but loose fit. Um, generally, loose fit is when a person who is um, a size above, like let's say this is a size 2, relaxed fit could be a size 4 can wear it. So loose fit. And then we have um, uh, oversized. And oversized, it's meant to be oversized, but generally more than two, two or more sizes can um, can wear it up as well. So that is an oversized fit. Some things are just like really meant to uh, hang on you and that's the style. So just uh, be aware of that. Toodles. And one more little thing, if you go back to the size charter and look at loft sizes, for example, I can tell you that loft sizes are very liberal in their sizing. So for example, with loft, I wear a size zero in pants. Now, under no condition with any other brands am I a zero. I'm generally like a four and sometimes a six. So be aware that one size could be so many different things. And when it comes to women, it's, it's really annoying that this could be. So I wanted to show you, I found this little chart. Um, let's see if I can find it. 
um, on brands that run bigger or smaller. So um, let's see, yeah. Um, so on the left side, from left to right, we have runs large, so you wanna wear a size down, um, an average, and then runs small, so you wanna size up. Um, our brands from um, uh, listed here. So Loft, Free People, J. Crew, Gap, Banana Republic, Anthropology, although Anthropology is on the line, tend to run large, so the tip is sized down. Average, Express, ASOS, Old Navy, New York, H&M, American Eagle, and Uniqlo. And then run small, meaning you want to go size up, and that's so true. And I. I was kind of surprised to see H&M here because I always go a size up on H&M. But we have Nike, Forever 21, Zara, Mod Cloth, and American Apparel. So I thought this might be interesting for you to see that spectrum. And now, um, if you like this type of stuff, definitely the website that I showed you, the size chart, is something that you should keep very handy because, obviously, you know why you need to keep it handy. All right. All right, so hopefully this was slightly helpful. You've enjoyed it. Um, also remember when you're taking me measurements, record to the nearest uh, quarter, one fourth. You don't have to go beyond that. That's the industry standard is the one fourth. Um, it's more efficient to take measurements while you're listing. So as you're taking a picture, you're laying an item flat. Um, if you're doing a flat lay, measure while you're doing it. Um, and if you are using a service that creates listings for you, let's say on eBay, and you are using Inkfrog or whatever, it's really best to take pictures of the measurements. That's how I do it with my, with my assistant. I photograph the item. And then I take a picture of the armpit, the length, and the shoulders or the, the waist, whatever it is. And that's how she knows what measurements to input. So that's been working out great. But now she's learning how to take pictures herself and do all her own measurements. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the other hint I wanted to um, pass on to you, and this is very important. Watch for alterations, looking at the original hem. Um, some suits are altered, especially the higher end ones. So you wanna make sure you represent that in your listing. Because someone might think it fits a certain way if they purchased that brand before and they're thinking it's unaltered and it's going to fit just like it did when they bought something else. But then they try on your thing and they're gonna be very dissatisfied because there are measurements that they were not um, aware of, uh, there were alterations that they were not made aware of. So be really mindful of, of that. Let's see another hint. The more complicated an outfit, the more measurements you're probably gonna have to take. So keep that in the back of your head. And then also the more um, expensive the item, the more measurements you're going to take. And that is really where psychology comes into play. Because if I am on Poshmark and I'm buying something that's like $200, that thing better fit me because I am going to be pissed off three times as much if I spent that much money and something doesn't fit me the way I thought it would fit me versus someone that just buys a $15 shirt and something doesn't fit. They might be like, oh, well, I, you know, whatever, da, 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 da. So just be kind of keep that in the back of your back of your mind. The more expensive, the more you want to make sure you've got all your bases covered because you might have one pissed individual. So that's it, you guys. Once again, hope this was helpful. If you liked it, um, please give me a thumbs up. And I, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I love making these little videos and so I want to continue to doing that. But in order to continue to do it, I gotta make sure people are appreciating it. So that's that you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Whatever you're doing, spending time with your family, whether you're reading the latest fashion magazine, playing with your kitty as I'm about to do, or 
or creating some listings or sourcing, of course. If you're sourcing, I'm so jealous because I'm not. Greetings and salutations. Love you all. See ya. Mm -hmm.